You're listening to Your Rivers Are Wrong, the podcast. Good morning, or evening, or afternoon, whenever you may be. Welcome back to the Your Rivers Are Wrong podcast. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Dante. And I'm the other host. My name is Marilyn. And we're here as we are every week to talk about the wonderful whimsies of world building, the arts and aesthetics of setting up a setting, and telling stories born from it. Now, we are closing in on the... (laughs) We're actually closing on the end of the season. We're only like three or four episodes away. Crazy. Yeah, it's going pretty quickly. The editing process of this podcast has been super interesting because I'm currently editing an episode we recorded a month ago, and it's going to release a month from now. Yes. So it's in this, this little, <laughs> That's little not time confusing pocket. at all. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so fun to just jump back and listen to those episodes and be like, oh, that's what we were doing four <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. So cool. So interesting. I hope that we're going to get like reactions, like live reactions that say like, oh, I hope you're doing better. And then I'm like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> and then it's been like me from a month ago in like chaos mode. <laughs> oh, I hope you're having a great that's gonna trip. That's going to mess oh, with I'm, my brain. I've been back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We're in a time loop. Yeah. It's very yes, cool. Yes. Now, you have had a busy week. Would you like to update anything that's been going on um, from your end? All the ups and all the downs happened. Currently, I'm doing fine. (laughs) But I had rehearsals (laughs) in the weekend, which were Mm -hmm. lovely and magic. And I am a theater nerd. I love theater. (laughs) I get reminded every time I hang out with theater people. (laughs) And every time people play live music at me, I just sort of swoon a little bit. It's what it was right now. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. So that's been very fun. And actually, I'm like going on rehearsals, like the weekly rehearsals are just happening tonight after this day. So that's going to yes. be like boot camp, basically. <laughs> but yes, that was very fun. And then um, also I started a second sort of part time thing, which is very exciting and very fun. It's uh, more related to publishing. It's, it's a sort of online publication platform for which I do communications and a little bit of like event curating. Nice, nice. Very fun, but also very busy because coming by the time of recording this, we have like a big launch of the new website so i started the job for like a week and now i'm instantly like <laughs> thrown into all the stuff that needs to be done for that so that's a uh, yeah a little stressful but so far very you know manageable so yeah good stuff good yeah stuff. that's good you know yeah. what do you call it today i think today well it's not going to be today for anyone listening but today i checked insta stories and i think you're in one of the advertisements or uh for the show <laughs> I think so too. Yes. Which was exciting to see. Exciting Very exciting. See. Yeah. 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 It's going to be fun. Okay. That's cool. Shows in three weeks. I'm sweating <laughs> and realizing that that's very soon. Three weeks go very fast. Did you realize? Mm-hmm. I didn't until like this weekend. And I was like, wait, three weeks? That's like not even a month. <laughs> they sure Stop. do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, part of the game. Part of the process. Absolutely. Yeah. How about you? This week has been. Uh, a bit crazy because I finally, after months of the pieces sitting around in my room, I finally decided to build a new computer. I have a, a desktop that I've been working on for the past week because, boy, the process is long. Wow, it's really <laughs> difficult. That's so cool. Oh, my God. I didn't know this. This is great. As someone who has never built a PC before, it's like building seven different IKEA cabinets. But you're packing it all into one little build. It's like, okay, you built the cabinet. Now build a cabinet inside that cabinet. And I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. (laughs) What do you mean inside the cabinet? Yeah. (laughs) I found the tutorial build a PC video on YouTube and it was two hours long. But everyone commenting says it took much longer than that. And I'm like, okay, I believe that. Maybe it'll take like five, six hours. It took me 12 hours to (gasps) put this whole PC together. So it's multiple nights, multiple long nights. (laughs) Um, I'm glad it's made. I haven't uploaded all of my programs to it, so it will soon be active. Can't wait. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. <laughs> That's so cool, though. Oh my God. And the great thing about it is that you can like curate it, right? That you can super make make micro decisions on every level because you're literally yes. building it yourself. That's great. I, I looked at all the content no more magic creator videos. Inside the box. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, what computers do they have? Because I want something like that so it's mm. way better than the computer i have right now i'm just nice. so excited to start using it did you yeah. already have a desktop or no or just laptop uh just laptop i've been running on a laptop yeah. this whole time oh that's gonna be so satisfying once you finally mm-hmm. turn this shit on oh mm-hmm. very good <laughs> I, well the first time i turned it on and everything lit up i'm like 
it lives. Ah. It lives. And this is like 4 a.m. in the morning. And like eight, eight hours of work. Amazing. And I'm just like, my hair is everywhere. I feel yeah. like the back to the I'm future moment. I'm seeing like Einstein <laughs> moments happening. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, God. So that's been my big achievement. Maybe, you know, you'll, you're going to gain some sleep after you realize how much more faster <laughs> your computer is. And like your editing time cuts down in half and all your, you know. That's the goal. I hope to yeah. make up all this time by saving rendering time. That's yeah. the dream. It's probably going to happen. Very exciting. Okay. And with that, uh, should we get into this episode? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's jump into it. With every episode, as we all know, we start off with a topic of choice by one of the hosts, and we end with an improvised prompt that one of us has no idea what it will be, uh, but we'll find that out later. Today's topic on the theme of building a PC throughout this week, it's been the one thing mostly on wow. my mind. <laughs> so specific. We've kind of touched upon it. In a previous episode called Technology, but today I wanted to talk <laughs> broadly about the wide topic of robots. Oh, let's talk about robots real quick. Now, robots. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, famously in in my TTRPG experience, for anybody who watches my YouTube channel, I'm really bad at sci-fi settings. I just can't wrap <laughs> my head around technology <laughs> beyond like. <laughs> The, the catapult so, so, so <laughs> i mean as, as, okay as in like i as yeah. in like i haven't been exposed to that much uh, literature about it so when the topic of robots comes up it always feels like a pandora's box of things that are relevant to world building to storytelling sure. and to um motifs and expectations in general of where this story is headed so today i want to talk about the keystone aspects to robots and why people like robots I want to talk about their impact on world building, how you flesh out a setting that possesses robots. And I want to talk about storytelling, what kind of stories are built centered around robots. So that's kind of the direction we're heading for today. Very good. I like this a lot. I can't believe we didn't touch upon this yet. I mean, we've done a bunch of sci-fi, but never like specifically robots. Yeah, yeah. We've done plenty of like robot adjacent prompts. We've done technology mm. in the past and a bunch of machinery. Yeah, it had to happen, you know? Yeah. So. Yes. Pop quiz for you. When I say robot, what's the first word that comes to mind? Wally, obviously. <laughs> yeah. The best robot of them all. That counts. That counts. And likely the most famous robot centric story be. of the past yeah. decade. Or, you know, Baymax, Big Hero 6 Baymax is also a pretty there. good one. Wally's more like OG, baby, but I, I do love Mia Baymax too. He's very yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also talking about the most like widely different <laughs> two robots that maybe have, <laughs> have grazed our screens. Yeah. Robots in design, in perspective, in story span a huge spectrum of like literature, of media from its inception. Like there's no real cap on how many different robots are already existing in the wild from like Astro Boy to Mega Man to the Sentinels of X-Men to... As we've said, Baymax, Wally, -E, uh, what do you call it? The, the the house from that movie where the house is evil. Uh, there's a whole <laughs> lot of <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Is it hell? I can't remember. I don't. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of robots. <laughs> um, so I want to I want to first establish the core tenets of what what defines a robot. Uh, yeah, at least from our perspective. It's very wide, right? Yeah. And obviously, this won't be the be all end all definition from us to. Uh, someone can obviously correct me and obviously Wikipedia knows better. So you can just go there if you want a specific definition. <laughs> but to us, to you and me, what is a robot? I want to start off by kicking it off that robots as a cornerstone were created for a purpose. They were created for a purpose. Creating a robot is not accidental. It's not happenstance. It's not a natural, a natural development, but rather when a robot exists in a setting, in a story, it has a reason it's there. And that's, I think, what separates it. I guess this is, this is a pretty heavy foundational point. This is what separates it from like people who, you know, just exist and just live. Robots are designed intentionally. And that is kind of what I think is a keystone to their storytelling and world building definition. Uh, what do you, would you like to add to that? Do you have a secondary point you'd like to tack on to this definition? Yeah, I was thinking as you started to answer that question, what it means. And I think your answer is way better than mine. Because I was like, <laughs> is it mechanical? Nah, it doesn't have to be. Is it like artificial intelligence? Nah, it doesn't have to be. You know, sometimes <laughs> it's just a little machine guy. 
you know, that doesn't do <laughs> anything except for... Have you... Sorry, this is already a ridiculous side note, but have you heard of that machine that is just made to turn itself off? So you turn it on and then a little like <laughs> hand comes out and then it pushes the button and it turns yes, itself yes, off. Yes. You know, that's a that. robot. It's super dumb, but it's a robot, right? Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of the um, also very specific <laughs> nostalgic reference of my life as a teenage robot, the animation series, which oh, was very XJ9. fun. Oh, XJ9. Yeah. yeah. And um, there's one episode in that where, because XJ9, the main character, the, the teenage robot, uh, mm-hmm. has a bunch of quote unquote sisters that she finds out, uh, XJ8 and XJ7 and XJ6, et cetera, et cetera, that are basically versions of her gone wrong or versions that mm-hmm. weren't perfect yet, which is ironically a very fun, like imperfect family dynamic because all of them have flaws. Right, right. And it reminded me a little bit of like, when is something good enough to be considered a like fully fledged character or or right. where's the line, right? Where's the line between like your, <laughs> I don't know, your drinks machine and your teenage robot, right? Like when, right. when do we consider something to have, you know, either a mind of its own or when, when do we take something serious enough to regard it as a person or as a mm. character or something? If that is what it is, of course, if that's the goal of it. That's very tricky and very dependent on both the art that it's in, right? The, but also mm-hmm. the medium and what exactly what you were saying, like what the function of your robot is yeah if it needs to be a character at all like i remember there's um if we're talking about wally anyway uh, i remember there was this one i think it was a ted talk about one of the um from some of the lighting designers in disney 3d animation it was very cool Mm. talked about like the light in pixar movies and in finding nemo and stuff and they also talked about how it was a very hard but also cool challenge to figure out how to design the eyes right the sort of binoculars of the character wally because it had to have a sort of life in it otherwise you Mm -hmm. wouldn't identify Mm -hmm. with it because it's basically his eyes right like anything else is not humanoid at all it's just a box with feet (laughs) um yeah but by certain you know reflections or like shimmers on the glass of the eyes it became sort of more personable and more like as if it had a soul and that, of course, that's a very design-y <laughs> question, <laughs> uh, but it, it talks about characters as well, right? Like, where's the line in that? And it, and do you want that? And if so, how on earth do you reach that goal with something that's not living or that starts exactly. as a bunch of screws or as a bunch of, you know, motherboard? Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head there, because what I find separates a regular machine from a robot is personification, the ability to interface with it and treat it as an individual almost right right? it's this sense of being able to interact with it more like a human being than as a tool yeah and that that involves some semblance of autonomy whether it be its own decision making or just its programming and as you said how you interface with it is entirely what defines it as something fulfills the qualifications of a robot right and in our world in our reality right we don't have many robots right at least not how how media has portrayed it we have like these new androids that are like jumping on boxes and lifting things and look very human and interact yeah. with us in human-ish ways but like the literary presentations of robots are much more advanced or much more personified there's definitely the autonomous aspect to them that is close to sentience basically that really yeah. pushes them into their own category of machinery I mean, it also kind of depends what you call even a robot, right? Because the interesting thing for me about Mm -hmm. the, I guess, character or like the race, I don't know, in D&D terms, I guess, (laughs) uh, of robots as a character is that somehow we tend to make them very humanoid still, or we tend to regard them as people because that's how we can relate to it, right? Because we are Mm -hmm. people. Duh. (laughs) Right. But, you know, it's not like there's no robots around us. There's so many I mean, <laughs> but they're all very subtle. They don't have arms and legs, obviously, but there's right. so much automated stuff around us. Literally the entire internet and everything coming from it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, yeah, <laughs> we shouldn't go all the way into this. But I think the interesting part for me is our, I guess, desire or something to make it humanoid so that we can understand it. Because if mm. it's not humanoid for us, we don't love it or we don't engage <laughs> with it because it's just right. a box, right? It's just a box with yeah. feet. I don't care about that. I only care about it once, you know, the light in the eyes makes me feel something. (laughs) 
quite literally. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Wally is, of course, a great, perfect example for this. But yeah, it counts on more levels, right? And I, I think that's why I find it very fascinating that a lot of the sort of classic sci-fi robots are in this way sort of traditional. Like, why do you need legs, right? As a robot, that's so impractical. Just have have a wheel or have a flying, I don't know, have mm-hmm. a hover function so that you don't have to like step. Stepping is so complicated. Right, right. Why would you bother, right? <laughs> but then there's so many of those like human-ish, you know, humans made of metal kind of robots Because otherwise we can't engage with it because we don't recognize it enough to feel as if it's a person. And I think that's very funny. I think that's very great because it's it's such an old school idea of like, oh, it has to look like a human. But then the whole function of the robot sort of is defeated because it's harder to make a robot with legs than to just make a robot that does what you need it to do. Right. And I think that's also where it comes, what you were saying, like the fact that a robot is purposeful, right? It's there because someone put a lot of effort into designing it and he wouldn't have done it if it was like a random passion project, right? Yeah. <laughs> Usually the robot is there for something. So if the, you know, the the reason for being there, if that's a reason of, you know, engagement or if that's an emotional reason, then it probably looks like a humanoid. Yeah. Or, you know, like a cuddleable Baymax. And if the reason is to pick up trash or if the reason is to, I don't know, be a sort of automated taxi driver. Yeah, of course it's not going to have legs. That's stupid. <laughs> of course it's not going to have eyes. It needs to do the thing that it needs, that it was built for, right? Mm-hmm. I'm realizing where we talked about this, and it was the episode where we talked about the uncanny valley. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's kind of that blurry line where a machine crosses over to something relatable. Yeah. It's like begging the question, how many modifications do you need to make to a blender before it feels like a robot? Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, what, right. what would it take? Right. What kind mm-hmm. of changes would you make? And with that, I feel like I want to jump into <laughs> a more natural segue from, from this point is storytelling. What kind of stories can we tell about a robot? Uh, and the first thing I have here as a, a classic, a robot story staple is sentience. It's the ability for a robot to make its own decisions. And that follows the natural progression of a hero's journey. It starts with dissatisfaction Hmm. with its current state, a relocation to a new environment. And it's the experiences of doubt, anxiety, fear, triumph, you know, all these things that are commonly perceived in people are attributed to robots instead. And we've seen this obviously in WALL-E, we've seen this in Iron Giant, we've seen this in Baymax. Oh it's yeah, when that's also a great one. It, it's a question of intended purpose versus reality. And that's kind of where every robot story starts and ends. Because if we believe that the core foundation of a robot's design is an intended purpose, then where do you go from there? And I feel like it's a natural jumping point to lead to somewhere else, a different purpose, a realization of a greater mission. And that's kind of where I often find robots land in terms of a storytelling aspect. Do you have any examples of like the robot stories that you like that either fit into this box or don't it? I think I had box? to also think, uh, and this is very classic AI side of the conversation, right? But the mm-hmm. um, movie Deus Ex Machina, or Ex Machina? Mm. I'm not sure. Uh, I think just Ex Machina? I forgot. Well, either of those. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> it's with uh, Oscar Isaac and, um, what's her name? Alicia Vikander. And Alicia nice. Vikander plays the AI female robot that the millionaire or something character of Oscar Isaac has invented and has poured all his money in. Mm. And it's it's a very good movie, first of all, but it's also a very human looking movie. Like it starts as a very sort of regular feeling movie. And that's very interesting in its own right, because then you start on the complete opposite side of your classic robot story, because that movie is also very much about sentience and about should we feel sorry for her being in the lab or should we feel sorry at all because she's not a living thing. She just looks like a mm. like a female. Right. <laughs> but that's kind of where that ends. Especially once we also learn that Oscar Isaac's character is also not great and is kind of a dick. (laughs) So you're like, Mm -hmm. I don't know who to root for now, you know? And that's kind of the point of a story, right? Rooting for the characters or feeling, you know, embedded or engaged in whatever it is they're trying to achieve or failing to achieve. Right. And I think that's quite a valuable aspect of storytelling. But yeah, also in robot storytelling, I I feel like that's just counts for all storytelling. (laughs) But that's definitely a great example of it. 
But I, I do think there is an interesting, there's a unique storytelling point that a robots often get that other people don't necessarily have, is that they start off neutral. Because they don't mm. have sentience, they lack that building block of morality. But once you give them the ability to make their own decisions, that autonomy, it starts becoming like, oh, now you have to reckon with morality. Now you, ha- <laughs> how are you going to use yeah. your talents and your unique build? Pretty scary. Is that good or evil? <laughs> like, I feel like a perfect mm. example of this is Westworld. Westworld is a, oh, yeah. it's a ser- HBO series where uh, robots that are incredibly lifelike are programmed not to make their own decisions. But once they are able to, once they gain this morality, how do they use it? How do they wield it? When they look just like everybody else, it's a very like dystopian sort of feeling. And another story that robots often lean into is the idea of corruption. Uh, we've also had an episode on corruption. Uh, <laughs> I am seeing now hey. why it feels like this ding, topic ding, is ding. very familiar, <laughs> yeah. um, because we've hit a lot of these uh, neighboring points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the sweet spot. The idea that they can be reprogrammed or altered without their, without their consent from the, from the influence of somebody yeah. else. That's interesting as well, yeah. And whether that's malicious or very rarely benevolent, it's this sudden twist of character, this unwilling twist of morality that often is jarring and painful and quite an obstacle on this hero's journey path and that any robot chooses to take. You know? Yeah. And that's also where sort of the sense of power comes from, right? I think power is also, or power dynamics maybe, to uh, you know zoom out mm-hmm. a little bit in there, is also very regularly visited in such stories because you're always going to be you know dealing with a creator or a sort of parent figure ish or they don't know at all and they have to figure out why they exist in the first place right it's a very (laughs) existential story (laughs) quite literally um Mm -hmm. because yeah it's it's not it's not a natural thing that's sort of the point that's the whole thing of purpose that we keep talking about and depending on what that relationship is with your origins, yeah, that's going to have an impact on you if you are, you know, a personable, you know, empathetic kind of character in that sense. Right, yeah. right. Just like how young heroes often have to reckon with their parents or their siblings, like a staple <laughs> NPC of a NPC, a staple side character or supporting character of any robot is their creator, right? And that informs them of their backstory, of the intent of their design, why they look like what they do, what they were intended to do. And if they choose to align themselves with their creator or choose an entirely different path, which is always a really cool way to build out where they came from. Yeah, for sure. Origins. And with that, I think that's a perfect segue into the final point. I'm trying to make this more structured. If you, if you, if you, yeah, no, I'm actually prepared notes. I it's feel so, it. This is me, like really, like it's really nice. <laughs> no, it's working it out. Home. Thank you. I appreciate that. Also, we've hit a lot of like the the necessary beats for this. Yeah, one. I feel yeah. like we went through that pretty efficiently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I want to believe that I kind of get robots, kind of. So <laughs> you know, I get you, dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Any robots listening out there, we feel you, man. Uh, if you're a robot enthusiast and you're listening to this i want to i just want a thumbs up just like i'm trying i probably don't know as much as you do but i'm working (laughs) doing my best but the final point i want to hit on or this the final category of things i want to talk about in terms of robots is what it means to world build around them because drum roll (laughs) anybody has ever made a fantasy setting uh, and they include a robot it's meaningful it's heavy. There, it's got to mean um, something. Yeah, definitely. There's three major technology questions. When I, when, I look to, when I look to create a setting, you always have to discuss level of technology, right? Where, where is the world yeah. at? What's the era? Yeah. My three bullet points are always guns, cars, and telephones. Do those exist? <laughs> oh, yes or no. <laughs> Please tick a box. <laughs> and usually it's all yes or all no, but sometimes, you know, it gets a little wild. But uh, yeah, yeah. Right above those, right? Above those is robots, right? Because if <laughs> robots exist, the rest of them probably exist. Yeah, there should be cars if there should be robots. Yeah. Otherwise, your story is very confusing. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like maybe I should have thought about that more because I feel like there's got to be stories out there that's just robots and nothing else and everything else is like old school. Perfect segue, Marla. Thank you for bringing uh, that up uh, because I'm going to bring uh, up a game that we've just recently played called Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, ah, uh, which does have uh, robots, yep. but doesn't have Guess guns, right. cars, or telephones. Hmm. What we find in a world that has robots is that the technology is either very, very new or very, very old. And it's not usually like 
something that's there. Yeah. It's not like boats, right? It's not like houses, <laughs> right? If, if a place has a house, it doesn't tell you anything about what era it is besides it being, you know, within the last, you know, without it having like established civilizations. Um, yeah. But robots are always an intentional choice that the world is often designed around, right? If the world has robots, there's a specific level of technology you're expecting, which is either ancient runic tech, deep space tech, or just some some futuristic sci-fi nonsense, right? <laughs> and that's kind of the Basically, categories, yeah, right? It's it kind of sums it up, yeah. The world building checklist of robots, question mark, it is a yes or a no, that the <laughs> yes box has such huge implications to what the world looks like. And I yeah. think robots are very unique in that aspect, right? Yeah. They're very unique. You got to think about it. It's, it's, it's just very telling of the world. It's very telling of the era. And uh, what, now, now it begs the question, what is the accessibility of robots to people? Is, is it used for war? Is it used for innovation? Like, why do robots exist? What Again, foundational point. They have to exist for a reason. Why do yeah. they exist? What is the meat and potatoes of the reason you've included them in your story? They can't just be a side thing. You can't just have a robot and not <laughs> explain it somehow. And if you do, yeah, true. you're crazy. And I hate that. And I'll, I'll be. <laughs> but I, I'll I'll tell you this though. I'll tell you this. I do I do really like it when a setting. Uh, I'm thinking of Shira, for instance, or actually also Zelda. I guess. Sure. Um, when a setting doesn't explain its tech at all, and it's just there for you to sort of figure out or not. <laughs> yes. I kind of like that because then it feels like you're part of something important and you have no idea what it's about and it's really satisfying for me to it's sort of humbling in a way right like mm -hmm, there's this super mm -hmm. important like cool difficult looking and sounding thing in the ground here or in a yeah. ruin somewhere and i don't know what it's for maybe it's for baking you know <laughs> no one will know <laughs> and that's really nice i do really like that so you know yeah there's there's a there's something good about that as well the only unsatisfying part is if it never gets figured out. Exactly, but, yeah. exactly. I'm a huge fan of wild, unexplained setting decisions. Yeah, me too. Like, <laughs> it's great. I know uh, one of my favorite manga, uh, Soul Eater. It's kind of like a like a I don't, don't want to say gothic, but kind of like a, a bit spooky, scary Darky. kind of theming in yeah. terms of its setting. In the sky is a giant crazed faced moon. Um, with big old eyes and a wacky crooked smile and they <laughs> never talk about it they never like bring it up <laughs> until the that. very very end which is a spoiler the very very end of the manga explains a crazy moon but it's like for the first hundred something chapters everyone's just okay with a crazy moon in the sky um, <laughs> that's pretty good so if, if you have a medieval fantasy setting and you just include one robot and never explain the robot it will <laughs> drive me insane i don't know about yeah. everybody else it'll drive me insane and i'll be intensely curious about why it exists because yeah. there's always a why. There's always got to be a why with robots. This is another little side note, but if you are super, you know, about this stuff that never gets explained, definitely also mm -hmm. look into magical realism because it's great. And it's very much this, you know, magic mm. stuff just happening, period. <laughs> and people just living or <laughs> it's, it's you gotta, know, yeah. just, just aside from it, like as a sort <laughs> of separate thing. Yeah. Because there's literally a story, one of my favorite books, actually, from uh, Haruki Murakami. It's IQ 84. It's very big, but very lovely to read in like a mm. week long boot camp holiday readathon, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. And it just has at some point there's like, huh, what's that second moon always there? Huh? <laughs> I guess so. Huh? I didn't realize dot, you know, and that's yeah. it. And then I was like, what? That's it. And that was my first like instance into magical realism. And it reminded me of this. So, yeah, little yeah. little shout out there for if you're interested in more of that stuff. It's great. You always have to think about, you, you know, in D&D, &D, when you get to like 13th level wizard and you can just cast the most ridiculous world changing spells, some things will just always be unexplained. And often it's just because a wizard just, you know, went crazy, went, went <laughs> off and decided to change something. Yeah. And there's no reason. Wizards no did it. Wizards, you know, who, yep. who, who understands them? Um, but I guess the final point I want to talk about in terms of robots, dialing back, keeping us on track, is that in terms of world building, robots present a fantastic opportunity to usher in an improvement or a repurposing of technology as a whole. If robots mm. exist, what is the direction of technology in this world? Is it innovating in the direction of war, of prosperity, of convenience or availability to the, the common man? If robots exist, I usually assume that it's either 
entirely defunct and have stopped advancement due to some old era tech or some problem that's happened in the past, mm-hmm. or it's progressing in a specific direction. Because if the robots are being used for something, it means that innovation is happening. It's present. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a natural. It's like a current going on. Yeah. Yeah. Assumption of innovation mm-hmm. in the works at all times. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's my <laughs> quick, quick one, good two. Wrap of, up. Yeah. I feel of like robots. we did like a good robots 101 world building here. Yeah. 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 We touched on so much shit. Yeah. This is super nice. Robots are sick. Great topic as well. Yeah. Love it. Cool. So. Are you ready for the prompt? Yes. As we do in every episode, one host tosses a prompt to the other host, and the other host does not know what the prompt is until this very moment. That's right. Your prompt is... Yes. Is it pull up and up it? Give it to me. <laughs> you have to describe a day in the life of a robot oh. <laughs> that has to adapt to an environment... It was not built for. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, that's really fun. Okay, okay. And I'm going to narrow this down. What I'm going to do is okay. look up a random job generator. <laughs> and this is what oh, here the robot, we go. Yeah. This is what the robot was programmed to do. Got it. Okay. The first one was wonderful and I'm just going to stick to it. Um, the first website I clicked and the first prompt I generated, the robot previous job was toilet attendant. Toilet attendant. Yes. Okay. I didn't know that was a proper job. That's like, you know, a person in a corner asking for money to like enter a, a public toilet. Is that the thing? I mean, maybe our, it's just general maintenance of the of the Could be. Restroom. Yeah. I feel like here's our here's our cultural differences coming in. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But okay. So that was that was the robot's yes. previous job. And now okay. they have to adapt to a this is a day in the life of a former toilet attendant robot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Woof. I feel like... Oh, let me think about this for a sec. It's got to be an upgrade. I want to have like a happy <laughs> robot. <laughs> what is a downgrade? No, but I mean like... I feel like he did his job so well, you know? Oh, yeah, That they course. promoted them mm. into something even better that he's going to be terrible at because he wasn't made for it, you know? Of course, of course. So I would say... <laughs> You have you have this crazed look. I can see. I mean, <laughs> your, your, so your gears specific. are really spinning. Yeah, the gears are spinning. Yeah, because I want uh, honestly, I like this to be as mundane as possible. If he started sure. as a toilet attendant, he, like he can't become a major league football player. He's got to like slowly, slowly <laughs> up and up. You know. All right. God, let me let me think. Hold on. You got it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay, it's got to be this. Mm -hmm. Here's the setting. Are you ready? (laughs) I'm so ready. Board ready. We zoom in (laughs) with the sound of like heavy, I guess, machine creation. Like you see the sparks fly almost, right? Like lots of heavy, heavy metal, (laughs) literal uh, kind of sounds. Um, This is a big factory that we find ourselves in. It's like a running, grinding. It's almost like a robot in itself. It feels like heavy, heavy machine stuff, right? Going on. Um, And as we zoom in on the big main factory hall, I guess, we see that on all corners of this has been basically filled with, (laughs) God, what's the word? What's the word for those like rolling conveyor belts? There we go. (laughs) (laughs) We see conveyor belts everywhere. We see tiny little metal parts everywhere. We see on all corners, on all edges of the conveyor belts running through this whole thing, like multi-layered, we see little robots and we see big robots and we see human people and we see maybe humans, but maybe robot people. There's all Mm -hmm. sorts of stuff in here. And this is like a heavy working environment. And we see the sort of, I guess, giantness, the sort of heaviness of this serious grinding factory of little parts. And then we scoot over. We scoot over to the side. <laughs> and we see toilet on a tiny corner in, or a tiny door inside of it. And just outside of this very dingy looking door uh, was probably like one of the first things that was there in this factory before it became the thing it is now. A little little walking man comes out. He's like <laughs> a little bit awkwardly tiny, like... He was designed to look friendly, but then they didn't have enough like parts or money to actually like build him fully sized. So he's like, he's like a little bit awkwardly tiny and he looks up 
And right after a humanoid person or human looking person comes out and brings our little robot man that very much looks like he was made to be in the toilet and not in the very <laughs> terrifying uh, sounding and looking actual like working environment of the, of the right, factory. Right. Yeah. And our little robot just happily scoots along, looks very excited and very ready to take on the day, right? And right behind him, uh, someone with a little like tag or something called, I don't know, general manager or like factory (laughs) (laughs) organizer. I don't know. I don't know how factories work. Um, (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. Sort of points towards one of the conveyor belts, one of the lower ones, because our our man's a little, he's a little robot. (laughs) He's a small robot. (laughs) And um, we can't really hear what they're saying, but it's obvious that they're showing them their new environment. And our little robot looks a little bit lost, but, you know, he's optimistic. He's happy to keep working. He's even excited, might you say, because mm. this this has been something that he's dreamed of all his humble little life, right? He's been, like, turned on for maybe, like, a year or four. A <laughs> year or four. Yeah. I mean, how long do you need a toilet person? Before this, this was too small to maybe have a specific job for this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So someone, you know created him because there were too many people going to the toilets that's totally how this works i know what a job but what a toilet person does for a job (laughs) so he did that for four years and then afterwards he's like i have to see the world you know i hear so much things from from outside from through the door come in my way and i never know what they're about i don't know what they're (sighs) building and you know after some serious conversation he eventually was promoted into the actual <laughs> factory hall so that what we're currently seeing is his first day on the new job oh and yes my man's almost like jiggling from excitement um <laughs> and as we see and as the manager leaves and leaves him to his first day on the job <laughs> we see how all the other robots and people and humanoids and anything in between that are working right next to him on the conveyor belt all are very like geared up right they have heavy like arm attachments that make Mm. it easier to grab stuff or they have like rougher metal protecting their gears and stuff because there's a lot of sparks flying everywhere and everything comes like right out of the machines (laughs) you know (laughs) because that's how this factory works of Um, course yes (laughs) <laughs> trust me i'm the world builder i totally know yeah i see about. you i see you yeah I see yeah you great great i'm, I'm so getting good at there this. you're so good at this <laughs> oh thanks thanks <laughs> yeah that's what i really needed they're they're geared up heavily right they look like chunks of metal basically and then our little a little friendly little guy is also there and he looks around and he's like huh and he looks at his arms and one of them is like a toilet brush and then the other <laughs> one is like a little a little thing that you have to like put coins in so that you can enter the door and he's like huh i'm not Okay, yeah, you know, okay, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to be, I'm, you know, I'm going to make this work. Oh, you know, I think I can I grab something with, with maybe if I like combine my, maybe if I just grab with two arms, you know, and then I can just sort of press it together and then I can like move things over and he's, he's sort of scooting around. Yeah, it's very, yeah, like adorable and I a gotta little bit say, sad. Anyone listening to this podcast is really missing out on the Merla poses, the robot poses that she's doing. Oh, yeah. yeah I was webcam. illustrating the toilet brush really with my hand. Yeah, just, just picture it as I, as I talk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> toilet brush hand in one hand, uh, coin, coin receiving socket. socket hand in the other hand. And he just turns over to his new colleague, I guess, to his new best friend, obviously. He didn't have colleagues before. Isn't this great? And he's like, excuse me, um, would you mind, like putting a coin in the slot so that I can do my work and the other guy's like what are you talking about are you uh you don't need you know, like just just grab the stuff and move it over it's it's you just have to like move it over and he's like I don't understand I need a coin to do my job I can't do it if I don't have a coin in my hand to do my job and you know there's all sorts of little problems arising as our little friend is trying Aww. to navigate his world that suddenly has grown much larger and much more interesting and perhaps a little bit more terrifying but, you know, he's making new friends every day. He's trying new skills every day because he obviously mm-hmm. is not meant for this job. Maybe he was just, you know, temporarily there for someone that sort of got grinded up accidentally by one of the machines <laughs> oh, no. or something. Or like, <laughs> I started in my brain with like, went, A went bit of and then I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. Check that in there. Yep. So, you know, he's, <laughs> I don't really know how, how I am, if this is it's the okay. end. But yeah, you can end it here. There's it's the fine. picture. There's the scene. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who knows what will eventually, perhaps he, he becomes like the sort of rogue version of himself, right? With like DIY parts attached to him. I think that mm. would be very cool. Yeah. That would be very cool. Yeah. But that's not what his first day was like. Hey. <laughs> uh, what a wonderful story. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe we'll follow up on this robot somewhere down the line or maybe not. That's I totally how know how like go. practical work w- works. Yeah. I've, I've been in factories, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head that you can't do Did that. Did I? Work. With oh, a yeah. toilet brush. I think and that a coin was socket. very good of me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. very educated. Yeah. Well, well listen. Thank you. Um, to anyone listening to this podcast, you've just been informed by two robot experts, clearly yes. well versed on the topic. Clearly. Yeah. And it's just one <laughs> of many, many world building topics we have covered and have yet to talk about. Yep. So. And there's so much more in the air. There's so much more. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Good good call to action. <laughs> uh, Thank thanks. you. We should yeah. Got to include- Yeah, if you like this podcast, totally <laughs> message us on our yeah. Gmail. Your Do rivers it. are wrong at gmail.com. I'm so practicing this. Let me pull out my YouTuber voice. Hey, if you'd like to learn more, be sure to hit that <laughs> thumbs up and hit the subscribe. So Spotify doesn't have a subscribe button, right? Just like a follow you're already doing it wrong i thought yeah, you were experienced not to- I, I, this, this, my podcasting is weird hey <laughs> l- thanks for listening uh we're gonna wrap up now uh there's something uh, your rivers are wrong your rivers are wrong. <laughs> have, have a great day oh my god goodbye <laughs> bye <Wait. laughs> See ya. okay oh my god we do bye mean bye. it though like we love you and reach out please okay cool <laughs> see ya bye-bye bye thank you for listening to this episode of your rivers are wrong If you have ideas for topics, prompts, or you just want to share your thoughts, please reach us at yourriversarewrong at gmail.com. That's yourriversarewrong at gmail.com. Also, a big thanks to Maarten Schellekens, who created the intro and outro music for our podcast. And most importantly, thank you for listening. We hope to see you at the next one. Bye.